Hi folks, I understand there was a slight issue with the audio earlier. Hopefully we have that resolved now and we'll get started here in just a moment. Thanks for the patience. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for bearing with us. Apologies for the audio issue during the brief introduction, but we're here, we're live, and we're all ready to go, courtesy of a few last minute things, which I'll talk about in just a moment. Really glad that you're here today. I don't know for folks who are interested in football or soccer, depending where you are in the world, we have the Euro Cup final happening in about an hour. So we're going to do our best to keep this within an hour and hopefully get everyone watching some football if that's what you're interested in watching. And then on the way this afternoon, afternoon. Really glad that you could all be here joining us today and we thank very much Colin for being here. Those of you who've been following along the saga of this webinar on Flight Simulation Association know that originally we were supposed to be doing this yesterday, then it got moved to today and unfortunately the original presenter who's a great guy, YouTube guy named Spudknocker, has had a family emergency so unfortunately he had to go and I reached out to Colin I think a day and a half ago, right Colin? Yeah. And I said, hey, can you come on and do a webinar? And he's like, yeah, sure, I'll put together a whole presentation in a day and a half. And so we thank you for the patience and thanks, Colin, for stepping in to help us out here. Now, Colin wrote a really great guide on combat flight simulation. So for those of you who are new to the genre and kind of looking at what is combat flight simulation, why might I fly the titles like DCS or IL-2 Sturmovic Great Battles instead of just jumping in a fighter jet in P3D or X-Plane or soon in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So Colin's written this great guide for us that talks all about combat flight simulation, everything from the different titles that are available to details around those top titles that are available and even going down into some of the companion software, hardware recommendations, and plenty of other great information. So for anyone who's new to this genre, maybe you've tried some of the civil flight simulators before and you're wondering this guide that we just released yesterday on combat flight simulation is a great starting point and of course we have Colin with us today to talk through the entire genre and of course to answer your questions as well. Uh, we promised that there's a few giveaways coming up in the stream so let me get into that right away. We are offering two copies of both Smooth Track, which is a head tracking application and a little different than track eye or track hat this requires no hardware whatsoever it's a simple ten dollar app that you download onto your phone and gives you that same smooth head tracking experience that you might expect from track ir without the need for all those extra pieces of hardware now that's available on the app store for ten dollars however we're giving away two copies of that for free as part of today's webinar the other thing we're doing today is giving away two free copies of voice attack and for those of you who fly in virtual reality especially, Voice Attack is a really helpful software. You can set up things like gear down and it will actually do the control G command and lower the gear for you. So fantastic thing if you're in virtual reality, you don't want to take the goggles off to use the mouse and the keyboard. Also available for $10, but we're also giving away two of those. So in order to enter both of those things, all you need to do is visit flightsimassociation.com slash survey. You can put in your email address. That's all we're asking. There's no other questions. Just flightsimassociation.com slash survey. Throw in your email address and use the code STORMBIRDS, you'll double your chance to win. That you can do at any point during today's webinar, flightsimassociation.com slash survey, toss in your email address, use the code STORMBIRDS, and we'll get you a chance to win. By entering that STORMBIRDS code as well, you're doubling your chances to win. We'll be announcing the winners of those in the next couple of days, and we've also got some discounts on both Smooth Track as well as more voice attack giveaways coming up in future webinars. So hang with us and definitely put your name in for those. 
And that's basically my introduction. I'm going to hand things off to Colin here, who, as I said, has done a great job in the last day and a half of stepping in and putting together today's presentation. If you have questions, this is obviously a great chance to ask them. We are here. We are live. So if you have questions, as if you're an FSA first officer, fire those in the chat. If you're a captain, same thing. And of course, if you're watching on YouTube, on Facebook Live, feel free to make a comment. We'll do our best to get through those. I've seen a number of comments on the uh, Stormbirds YouTube channel, a few on the flight some expo one as well so feel free send those comments send those questions in i'll collect them and i'll interrupt colin with them as i can and so with that colin i'll hand things over to you thanks again for being here and we're looking forward to hearing what you have to say about this really cool and unique genre of flight simulation cool thanks very much evan so uh yeah good afternoon everybody uh, i'm going to try and get through this in about 45 minutes if i can because i also want to watch the uh soccer uh game coming up uh the uh, euro cup uh, final so um yeah um i if anyone's anxious about that i'm right there with you so this is a introduction to combat flight simulation uh i have approached this from a couple of different angles and the the first angle is you're completely new to flight simulation so i'm going to try and be as general and basic as I can just to kind of get you through the introductory level. Uh, and the other angle that I'm coming at this from is that, you know, maybe you are a experienced um, uh, flight sim um, uh, pilot, but you're interested uh, in jumping over to do some combat flight sims after you, maybe you've spent some time with P3D or uh, FSX or Microsoft Flight Simulator, the new new version or X-Plane, what have you. So, uh, so tried to tailor today's presentation to, to those two groups. Uh, if you're joining me on uh, on uh, my YouTube channel or uh, through the link on my blog or uh, through uh, the FSA uh, webinar link, then uh, and you're already experienced with uh, combat flight sims, then this may not be, um, you may not learn anything new, but uh, thank you for being here, uh, even if you, uh, even if you are an experienced uh, uh, combat flight sim uh, player. So anyways, uh, let's get going. So um, my name is Colin. Uh, online, I uh, usually go by Shamrock15. I'm the editor of Stormbird's blog uh, and podcast. Uh, I have been doing that for about five years now. I did a bit of a tally the other day, and it's been actually 25 years of combat flight sim experience, uh, going back to uh, Dynam uh, Dynamics um, A10 tank killer on a 386 computer. So um, I uh, got to start when uh, you know combat flight sims were a couple of polygons on a screen, and you kind of had to imagine everything that was happening around you. Uh, we're obviously in a very different place in uh, 2021 now with uh, the visuals and uh, fidelity that we have, and uh, I'll get into that. So uh, I also did want to do just a little bit of a shout out for Spud Knocker, who was supposed to be uh, presenting. He did have a family emergency, as as Evan said, and uh, I just wanted to do a little shout out to him. I you know hope all is well and. Uh, um, yeah, I encourage people to check out his channel because he does some really good content and has lots of uh, tutorials on there as well. So I uh, thought I would do that very briefly. Uh, so the, the first thing I wanted to tackle in this presentation is how a combat flight sim differs from a civil aviation sim. And, uh, you know, one of the sort of biggest elements of that is uh, you can load up P3D or Microsoft Flight Simulator with uh, some very good uh, um, first party and third party uh, combat aircraft, military aircraft in those sims. So, you know, what makes the difference between those sims and uh, the ones I'm going to be talking about today? And I think that's going to be a theme that's going to run through the whole presentation. So I, I won't answer all right away, but I did want to kind of get into some of the sort of uh, the, the bigger picture of it. So, um, Primarily, I'm going to be talking about IL-2 Great Battles and IL-2 um, Close of Dover Blitz, as well as DCS World today. So those are the um, two or three titles that I'm going to be talking about primarily. And they all have, uh, I think, more in common than they have apart when it comes to how they approach things versus how a civil aviation sim approaches them. And the, the really, the big difference is, is uh, the experience of the world that you're experiencing when you go into the, these combat flight sims. So if you load up in 
uh, P3D. You're going to, you know, pick your airport or, you know, an X plane or flight simulator, any of those. You're going to pick your airport. You're going to uh, load up into your, you know, potentially very high fidelity experience. You're going to, you know, run through checklists and, and fly your aircraft. The, the difference is, is that that environment is not specifically set up for uh, some of the, the combat scenarios that can occur. So um, you may even be able to launch weapons in, in some of those sims um, and in other sims not, which is fine if that's, you know, you're not interested in that, then those sims cater to that. Uh, combat flight sims, obviously they include combat, but they also do some other elements, uh, extremely high fidelity. So uh, the graphics, um, the interactivity and the destructibility of the environment, the uh, various other elements that are going to be in there, the uh, AI systems, the you know um, obstacles that you may face in combat from enemy air defenses to um, defending aircraft or attacking aircraft as it may be, all of these elements, uh, they come together to form you know, a cohesive whole that uh, really, you know, helps sort of sell that combat flight sim experience. So I'm going to walk us through some of these things as, as we go along. So you'll, you'll hopefully you'll see that. But I, I wanted to address that, you know, these are um, uh, very specialized uh, pieces of software that they've, and they, you know, both the IL-2 series and the DCS World uh, series has been going on for quite a long time. And, you know, they've uh, evolved a lot uh, of their systems uh, in ways that the civil sims just, they don't. So it's, um, uh, it's they're special, like I said, they're specialized and they they have that, that uh, layer of detail. So, um, and Colin, if you don't mind, I'll just kind of throw out sort of questions at you sure. as we get them sure. because they're going to get across various channels here. Yeah. Thank you to Trevor from Flight Simulation Association, first officer, asking what are some of the coolest evolutions that you've seen in combat simulation? And maybe you can talk specifically to, you know, of course, some people like shooting things, but I know there's sure. much more to the genre than just the idea of a dogfight or just the idea of, you know, jumping in an F-16. For sure. That's a really good question. And, and uh, I think that actually helps make my point, too. So uh some of the coolest evolutions have been not necessarily on the um on the combat part where you know things are exploding although certainly you know that's at, at a high you know a higher level now than ever before but uh it is on the other layers of detail the things like you know adding in systems for radio beacons or you know more detailed um um electronic warfare um modeling in the case of modern stuff or you know you know those layers of detail where you get uh that kind of uh thing going on so i think that's part of uh part of the thing that really impresses me and i think the other thing that's really impress impressive is uh both of these series really push the limits on uh the the fidelity of the flight modeling so you know, X-Plane uh, is held up as being an excellent uh, flight, you know, having an excellent flight model. And it, indeed it does. Uh, and, uh, and DCS World and IL-2 are right there with it um, at a very high level. And, and they've been able to push the limits on, on that over the last few years. So I think those two things, um, you know, adding the, the depth and detail to uh, some of the experiences in, in modeling, yeah, uh, incredible advancements that have been made. Great question. Did, did, is there another question we want to answer while we're, we're still here, or should I move on? No, I think that's good. I'll just you know comment from the chat from R Sharp saying the best addition in the last few years in combat sims has been carrier ops, which I know is a big thing yeah. people can't do in a lot of the other civil sims. And Michael Dwyer says DCS's clouds are amazing. So there's a couple of yeah. comments to add to that. Yeah, sounds good. Move on. And folks, as you have questions, send them in. I may interrupt, but we may also save some of them for the end to make sure we keep moving and get through everything. For sure. All right, good. All right, let's uh, continue on. So um, at this point, uh, I'm going to show off a few clips from, from uh, both sims to, to kind of highlight some of these points. And I wanted to start off with carrier takeoff and landing. And uh, we had some glitches, but I think we've, we've got this working. So you should be able to hopefully see this video in a moment. Evan, you can let me know if we're live. Okay, good. So. Um, I think that should be full screen. So, all right, no problem. So 
this first clip is focused on carrier ops and, uh, and you know, uh, one of the people commenting said, you know, the biggest advancement is carrier ops. And so th this is DCS World's uh, super carrier module and DCS World FA FA18 Hornet. And together they offered an incredible experience for uh, really detailed carrier operations, the likes that you just do not get on a civil sim. So uh, in that sequence, I just very quickly, um, you know, I already had the aircraft hooked up to the um, to the catapult and then launched. But you, of course, can go through the whole procedure from starting cold and dark to taxiing out to following the hand signals of the uh, deck crew to get you onto the, the uh, catapult hooked up, you know, geared up, ready to go. And then, you know, you're given the go, go ahead and you go full throttle and, and take off from the carrier. So, um, that is a fairly new experience to DCS World in the last year. Uh, DCS Supercarrier um, has really added a lot of extra layers. We had carrier ops before that, but this is this is at a whole new level. So um, that was my first clip. The clip that you're watching now is uh, what you call a case one recovery on a on an aircraft carrier deck. So uh, you know we're doing the fly pass right now. And uh, we'll come into a into a circle, basically bringing it 360 degrees and into the carrier. So um, I wanted to very briefly give a bit of a disclaimer that I, I had very short period of time to pull this together. This is not a full by the book uh, carrier landing. Um, it's close ish, um, but you're going to see at the end there that it was a bit of a rough landing. So um, and I'm already a little out of the pattern from what I should be, but. Um, that's okay. This is just kind of to illustrate some of the technologies involved. So, you know, I've jumped through some of the layers there from contacting the carrier on radio to doing the overhead break and the, and the loop around and now I'm on final. So, um, and I'm actually, I'm too high and I have uh, the cross there, which is the uh, ILCS system on the Hornet, which, you know, basically, you know, makes it easy to get you right onto target. Um, I was a little bit high, uh, but I managed to, to make it work, spoiler, um, but you'll note that my uh, landing speed there was just over a, a, a thousand feet per minute, so probably the crew chief will be a bit annoyed with me at the end there, so um, yeah, and then you can kind of see some of the interactivity with the elements, so that is... Um, actually, I'm just going to run the next video, so that was carrier landings. Now we're on to uh, another element of, of military flying that you'll find in combat sims, uh, and in this case in DCS World, uh, that you are not going to find in a civil sim, and that is uh, the art of aerial refueling, or air-to-air -air refueling, or AAR as, as it might get shortened to. So uh, in this example, I'm again flying a Hornet. I'm coming up on an S3, uh, which is configured for the, the role, and you know, I'm running through the radio communications to, to get information. I've extended the probe, and this is the, the Hornet uses the, uh, the the probe system to connect. Um, there is the uh, U.S. Air Force model, which uh, is different, and you have the boom that connects with the aircraft instead. So both are modeled in DCS World. Um, this is actually a really fun thing to do. It's also very very challenging. Uh, in this example, you'll actually see on my first attempt, I actually I did miss the basket. I had to break away. Um, it's, uh, it's fun and it's definitely one of the most um, uh, challenging things I've done in any flight sim ever. So um, yeah, here I am on the second attempt trying to plug into the basket and I get it. And uh, now just a matter of trying to, uh, you know, stay in formation with the, uh, with the tanker and hold that position for a couple of minutes while, you know, the aircraft uh, is fueled up again. So um, yeah, it can be a really exhilarating experience, uh, and you're not, you know, there's no explosions, you're just, you know, flying the aircraft that was meant to be flown. So, um, I shortened things there, but it took, it took a few minutes to, to fully refuel the tanks and then, you know, tanks are full and it's time to break away. And, uh, and, uh, then I uh, manipulate the controls there to bring the probe back in, as you can see on the screen there. And... And then away we go. So that's that's that. Uh, next video is uh, IL-2 Great Battles. And I wanted to show off, I did want to show off some combat as well. So in this one, uh, in this video, I'm going to show a series of clips that involve some combat. So again, this is, I did this very quickly. This is a 
Um, this is from IL-2 Battle of Moscow. It's a convoy attack, and here I am strafing one of the lead vehicles in the formation, firing a rocket at it. I actually missed with that rocket. They're, they're hard to hit with, but um, um, yeah, so just to give some uh, different kinds of flavors that you can get when, when you're uh, involved with combat flight sim, because it's not all, you know, air-to-air -air dog fights, but also ground attack, uh, strike missions, that kind of thing. So in the second video, uh, this is actually an online clip from about a week ago. I'm flying with, an, with another YouTuber, uh, Wolfpack 345, and uh, the two of us are, are attacking this um, uh, allied air base. Um, this is on the combat box IL-2 server. So he's out just ahead of me and he strafed some things on my right side. I took the left side, we came down the field at very high speed. You can see there's tracers coming at us. Um, so uh, we're flying at very high speeds uh, and actually we're in uh, BF-109. So, um, um, which is not, you know, ideally a ground attack aircraft but it certainly can be pressed into the role when needed. So, uh, so in this video, I continue on, I'm, turning back around and you can see there's a lot of flak. Uh, the air, airfield defenses have woken up and they're trying to get us and we're trying to take them out. So Wolfpack's on the left, shooting at some of the, um, the uh, air defenses there. And here I am on the right and I'm taking out one of the air defenses and we're doing a bit of what you call a dragon bag. So um, they're shooting at him and then I'm eliminating one of the guns that is focused on him, which makes obviously the job a bit easier. And uh, in this next uh, example, uh, we're into the modern day. Things are a little bit different, but not all that different. I'm flying an F-16 DCS World. This is over, uh, this is using the DCS Persian Gulf map. And uh, I'm configured here for uh, what's called a CCIP uh, bombing run. So I'm using unguided bombs. This is not a precision weapon, um, but you can actually engage with a surprising level of precision um, using some of the onboard uh, computers. So it's giving me uh, an aim point and I'm just trying to steer the aircraft onto it. I'm deploying countermeasures at the same time because there's air defense units that are trying to lock me up and then release uh, the weapon and my wingman and I pull off the target. And again, releasing uh, countermeasures as we go. And you can see the uh, shaft and flare being uh, dispensed there to try and throw off radar or uh, infrared guided missiles. So, and then uh, you'll see there's a, you might be able to see it. There's smoke and there's some fire um, from the target that we hit. And with a you know, fair degree of precision, even though we weren't using precision weapons. Uh, and then in this other example, I'm flying, uh, this is a MI-24 Hind. It's a new module for DCS World. I'm uh, attacking a mortar site um, that's attacking a, a friendly installation. And uh, I'm using uh, uh, guns and, and rockets to engage the targets there. Um, I actually, I hit it on the first run. I didn't actually get the capture of that. Uh, and then I jump over to the same mission and, and uh, again, defending a friendly uh, position, but uh, this time from a, a vehicle convoy uh, with a, you know, armored car or armored uh, personnel carrier and, and other stuff. And actually my aim was pretty horrible yesterday. Like I said, I was in a bit of a rush, but um, I just wanted to illustrate, you know, you can have those um, experiences uh, from close up or, you know, from further away. So last uh, video I'm going to run here is um, air combat focused and it's fairly short, but I wanted to show off a couple of things. So in this first segment, I'm flying a P-51D uh, Mustang. We're flying high over Germany. I'm escorting some A-20 bombers. Um, and I wanted to show, you know, uh, the AI system in IL-2 is actually aware of your position. So that, that A-20, I got too close to him and he maneuvered out of the way. So, um, you know, it's all part of that integrated system that combat flight sims have where, you know, the, the AI and the systems in it are oriented around uh, that. And uh, we uh, were intercepted by some BF-109s. And so this is a short clip here where I'm uh, pulling lead. So that's, you know, placing the gun sight ahead of the target to lead the bullets onto the target. And, you know, I managed to score a couple of hits and that 109 is maneuvering out of the way. I score some more hits and he's now uh, leaking uh, coolant and, uh, and fuel. So he's out of the fight. 
All right. Uh, in this next clip, I'm I'm back in the F-16 uh, over the Persian Gulf, uh, and this is you know this is a different type of air combat experience. Uh, the F-16 is very good at close in dogfighting, but it's also a very capable uh, beyond visual range uh, aircraft, so it can engage uh, targets from um, 20 or 30 nautical miles away easily. So in this example, I've on the the left display, I've uh, used the uh, radar to lock a target, and then I've uh, got that target on my heads up display in front of me and I've fired an AIM-120 AMRAAM. And of course, all the modeling for these missiles is, is done at a very high level. So, um, uh, you know, there's, there's detailed modeling in terms of um, drag at different altitudes and air densities and that kind of thing. So, um, and it continues to improve over time too. So uh, missile impacted the target and you can see there's some pieces falling. So that is perhaps a little uh, impersonal. So I thought I would finish the combat seg uh, the air combat segment with some World War One, and this is back in the IL-2 series in a uh, uh, expansion title called uh, Flying Circus. And here I'm in a, a German. It's actually a monoplane, late war monoplane of, uh, in World War One, engaging um, a Sopwith Camel. So I've just uh, made a gun run on him. And he's out of the fight. He's he's headed. He's going down. So now I'm uh, keeping my head on a swivel, and I'm trying to see what's going on in the fight. This is from multiplayer, by the way. So this is a multiplayer experience. So um, you know we're dealing with uh, human pilots primarily, but there's also flak batteries that are engaging you know aircraft and giving their position away. And you know we're over we're flying over no man's land, and there are explosions and tracers you know, from machine guns flying back and forth. Um, uh, on the ground as well. So you feel like you're part of that, uh, that environment. So here I am, I've got some altitude advantage. There's a Southwest Camel flying below me, famous uh, uh, British aircraft from World War I, uh, very successful aircraft. And I'm uh, doing what's called a bounce. So I'm, I'm dropping in on him and engaging him from, from altitude with advantage and managed to get a, a really good uh, gun run on him. So, uh, and I think that's it. So that's it for, for some of the, uh, the videos. So a pretty solid video series there. So maybe just for those who are joining, I think, think it's fair to say this, but you can correct me. Is any of that possible in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 as it stands today? No, uh, no, it's not. Certainly not. Uh, there's, uh, you know, Microsoft Flight Simulator is a great product. It does a lot of stuff in the civil aviation area. It doesn't have things like integrated air defense networks or SAM sites or you know radar units that are um, you know uh, tracking radar units that are going to try and pick you up on radar or um, you know flak batteries or you know air enemy or friendly AI that are going to interact with you and you know try and shoot you down or avoid you or you know in the case of that A20 where I got too close avoid me actively like they don't they don't need to worry about that kind of thing because that's not a normal situation in, in civil aviation. But in combat flight sims, that's you know almost part and parcel. Like these are not necessarily even new things uh, in these areas. So um, uh, yeah, that it's a totally different experience and and uh, technology that, that uh, both series have built into to make that all work. And just before you move on, one last question from Yamin on the FSA captain chat. Is there a good series on BVR beyond visual range and BVM? So uh, you, mean, you mean like uh, tutorials? I think maybe maybe asking either that or possibly like, you know, which of the two titles that you just described would actually sure. have support for those? Sure. So so beyond visual range is, is a, you know, it's modern air combat that, uh, that has that. And that's, you know, kind of the last... In between 20 and 40 years, depending on the, the, the aircraft platform, uh, that's DCS world for sure. Um, IL-2 is focused on World War II, where you really do have to get close with your machine guns to make them count. So um, so that's definitely DCS. Um, and if he was asking about tutorials, there's, there's a bunch out there. Um, you know, one of the ones that I would maybe shout out is Growling Sidewinder. He does a lot of you know, 1v1, 2v2 kind of, of videos where he'll fly it and then he'll go back over the fight and he'll show you all the different components and he'll use a piece of software uh, called TrackView, um, sorry, um, TacView that um, 
uh, will, you know, give you that kind of overview and you can see where all the different pieces are, you know, missiles being slung back and forth and that kind of thing. So um, definitely check out that channel. There's others that, that do it as well, but um, that's a good channel that kind of focuses in on that kind of uh, analysis and tutorial and you can learn a lot. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've talked a lot of, of about, um, I think, things that are already on this, uh, this piece, but, uh, you know, uh, DCS World IL-2, you have to, you know, you have to worry about all the challenges of combat, air defenses, you have to worry about the ground war, the things that are happening down there, or you're in, you're acting in support of the ground war, potentially. Um, and one of the things I haven't talked about yet is, uh, um, managing the, the aircraft, uh, if it's been damaged by something. So, you know, you, you can set up scenarios in civil sims where something fails, but, um, I, I think that's a little more prescribed because you're like, okay, I'm going to have an engine failure and, and you have an engine failure. Um, what happens when it happens unexpectedly? So you're, you know, you're in an air to air fight and something gets hit and now you have to worry about, you know, everything else that's going on around you, but you also have to worry about um, managing maybe a damaged engine or a cooling system that's failed, or, you know, your radar isn't working. Uh, you know, what's your, what are your backups? How do you get yourself out of that situation? So those are some of the challenges that the military uh, sim can, can add on. Um, and, uh, you know, many military jets are, you know, fuel hungry. So you have to really manage your fuel um in a much more variable way than you would be if you're say flying a long haul airliner so um there you don't you know you don't need to kick in afterburners and suddenly you're in a you know you're in a fight situation that you weren't expecting or you're evading something or you know you need to go to a tanker right away because you've you've run low on fuel uh earlier than you expected these kinds of scenarios are all sort of part and parcel of that uh experience uh, so uh, when I uh, when Evan asked me to do this, I was I was in the middle of a flight, and so I I asked uh, the, the people in my group, you know, what are the things that you wanted to know when you're getting into combat sims? So they all talked about hardware first. So I'm going to do this next segment on hardware. Then we'll talk more about the software. But uh, you know, some of the things that you you should have, uh, I think, to get really get started. You know, a high-end PC. If you're already into uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator and you've got that running well, DCS and IL-2 will work great too. But you certainly need a, a higher-end system to um, be able to handle it. it. Doesn't have to be, you know, the cream of the crop, but just certainly something modern with with a fair bit of, of power behind it. Um, there are some sims that you can play uh, without a joystick, but really to get a good experience, I recommend having a joystick. It, you know, you can get a simple one and I'll, I'll go into that. Um, uh, but, you know, if you can get a joystick with, with a bunch of buttons on it, with a basic throttle axis um, and it, with a Z axis, which gives the, the stick the ability to twist, that gives you kind of everything you need. So you've got your, you know, your X, Y, so your, you can operate your, your ailerons and elevators. You can also use the twist axis to, to uh, activate your rudder. If you've got those things, if you've got a throttle and you've got some buttons and a trigger on it, then that's really all you need to get started. You can get much more sophisticated, which I will get into, but uh, you know, that is, um, that's the basics. Uh, they all said, you know, you need to get a head tracker. Um, and so what I mean by that is some kind of tracking device that will track your, your head position in the cockpit so you can look around. And you'll probably have noticed in my videos that, uh, you know, my head's not fixed forward. I'm, I'm looking around, I'm looking up, I'm looking down. Uh, and that is, I'm using, some, I'm using um, something called a Delon clip, but the the popular brand name is Track IR. So uh, I basically have a, a unit that's attached to my headset. It has three LEDs in it. It picks up information from um, a, uh, in my case, it's a webcam, but you, uh, Track IR has their own specialized IR camera. And all it sees are those three points and it's able to use that to then track your head position and move it around. So uh, they all said that that is, is close to an essential. I actually flew combat sims for many years without it. Um, so it's doable. You can use the hat switch on your joystick to get by, uh, but it is a nice to have. So it's certainly something to consider. And, and some of them are reasonably priced. Some of them are more expensive. So um, 
and uh, the smooth track system that uh, Evan is you know is giving away uh, in a couple of days. That's w one of those systems that you can use to to do that. So um, yeah. nice entry the... level thing because you don't have to buy any hardware. You don't have to buy a headset clip. Sure. It's just use your smartphone, mount it up somewhere near your monitor and you're good to go and we've got sure. a video blue games did a nice video on that and a comparison of head trackers which you can find on our website as well perfect yeah so you know those things are are useful in civil sims and they're they're almost essential i think in combat sims if you're especially if you're getting a bit competitive and you 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 know you need to be able to look around really quickly so um it is a game changer when you get it i i it took me a while to get there but it, it it's huge so um those are the things you need and you don't have to, to shell out a ton to get into combat flight sims um and um you know, th those things will get you started and, and doing some of these things like, you know, ground attack or doing, you know, in-flight refueling or, or what have you. So you have, uh, you don't need to spend tons is, is my message. Uh, you can start small and work your way up. So I, I threw together some, some PC specs just to kind of put it out there, you know, uh, ninth generation or later Core i5, i7 I from Intel or uh, AMD Ryzen, the 3000, the 5000 series, those are great for, you know, modern PC build, at least 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, if you're into some of the, the more intense DCS world stuff, I would up that to 32 gigs. Um, a few people are starting to go to 64 even. So, you know, um, RAM is important. Fast storage memory really makes a difference here. Um, it's, it's helpful on civil sims because you can kind of get in there quicker here. It really makes a difference in performance. So, um, you know, makes your flight smoother and, and that can translate into a more enjoyable experience. So, um, definitely that, uh, GPUs, if you can stomach the prices these days and they are pretty ridiculously priced at the moment. Um, but you know, the RTX 2000s, uh, or AMD's RX 5000, 6000 series, um, you know, you're going to get good experiences from some of the higher end you know, versions of that, the uh, RTX 2060, 2070, 2080, um, and then now the three series, um, um, any of those will, will be able to handle it, you know, uh, really well. Um, I haven't talked about VR yet. I would say if you're going VR, you really need to pay attention to your specs. You need to, you know, bump them up even a little bit higher than you would if you're playing in 2D. So that's worth, worth keeping in mind. And of course, high speed internet, you need that to stream in, uh, some of the, resol the, the high resolution um, satellite Im uh, imagery for Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, not as important um, for combat flight sims, but if you are gonna be online in any way, then, then you definitely wanna have that. A couple of questions on virtual reality and head tracking we can take care sure. of right now. Herman, FSA first officer, asking about the track IR device, wondering if you have done anything special with the clamping unit. His says he tends to find it slides off the top of the monitor. Have you ever experienced that, or do you just use the stock stuff that comes with it? Yeah, so I'm not using track IR. I'm using Delon Clip, uh, uh, Delon Clip and uh, they sent me a PlayStation 3 eye camera that they'd modified to only accept IR. So it does have the same problem. I've used a piece of um, uh, like painter's tape and it dries out after a year or something you have to replace it. But um, just a little piece of painter's tape actually just taped onto it seems to hold it in place because uh, I was always knocking it off. So I know, I know that that uh, pain um, and that seems to do the trick. And, and the nice thing of course is with painter's tape is that it doesn't, you know, it doesn't leave any real residue when you're done. So uh, you're not going to ruin your monitor or anything like that. Um, so that helps in addition to the clip that it's got. All right. And Surtur on the Stormbirds YouTube channel asking, could you talk a bit about head tracking versus virtual reality? Mm hmm uh, yeah, so I mean, I have done a little bit of VR, uh, and it's incredible. Um, you know, nothing else like that. And, and I think flight sims are the killer app for VR. Uh, uh, or certainly, you know, uh, flight sims were made for for it. So um, it is a great experience. It is definitely more challenging to get set up. You know, that said, you know, probably 20, 30, 40% of the community in flight sims flies VR, some of them exclusively. So um, it is a good experience. It, it does mean that you need to, A, you need to spend a bit more because you need to buy uh, a VR headset and those can, those can get pricey. And uh, you need to make sure that your system's really top spec and you will definitely need to spend time, especially with DCS World, because it is a bit finicky with, DC, with VR right now. 
um, you need to spend some time to tweak your settings and, and get them up to scratch so that you can uh, experience it that way. Uh, the other issue is resolution and the new higher resolution VR headsets are um, really starting to get to the point of uh, where monitors are at. Um, but you will have a little bit of visual de degradation. It does make it difficult sometimes to spot aircraft. And, you know, some uh, combat sims, uh, you know, we jokingly refer to them as dot simulators because, you know, sometimes you're just looking for a dot on the horizon and that's, that's the bad guy that's coming to get you. Um, so that can be an issue with VR headsets. The newest generation are higher resolution than ever before. So I think we're getting to the point where that won't be an issue, but it is worth bearing in mind. So yeah, um, let's. Uh, unless there's any other questions, I'll I'll keep talking about yeah. uh, about some of the hardware. So uh, I I did a bit of a, a thing here. I'm just going to quickly go through them, but an inexpensive setup. Uh, Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. If you say that to a bunch of combat flight simulators, a bunch of them are going to go, "Oh yeah, that was my stick." Um, most this stick has been around for ages. It's still good. You can get them for you know, like $30, $40 US. Um, um, they're sometimes hard to get because they're actually fairly popular, but it's a good starter stick. It's got enough buttons on it that can get you going. And I, and I wanted to put that in there because, you know, like I said, I, uh, combat flight sims can be very easily accessible um, and you don't need to, to shell out, you know, thousands on, on uh, high-end hardware to get yourself going. So here's a really inexpensive setup and that'll get you going. You know, I think for most people, it's a good starting place. Um, you know, there's the mid-range. You can get in. Uh, VKB Sim has their Gladiator NXT that just uh, came out about a, uh, you know, six months ago, a year ago now. That runs, you know, 120 to $150, depending on configuration and the vendor. Um, that's that's a good stick. It's got, you know, everything that you'd need to, to keep on going. It's got hat switches. It's got uh, a throttle access, that kind of thing. Um, Logitech has uh, bought the uh, the old Saytech line, and they still have the X52 uh, Pro um, and some of the other old Saytech sticks, which are again still good sticks. Um, so I had I had an X52 from um, Saytech for like ten years or something, and it only you know it died after ten years, but that's that's pretty good service. So um, that comes with a throttle and stick. You know, again, he's got the twist access that can get you going. Um, that's a good option. Thrustmaster, the T16000 FCS flight pack. I've, I've actually got a hardware review on, on stormbirds.blog about that. Um, again, another good uh, kind of mid-range uh, unit. You can pick those up for around 250 US these days. They're all, all of these are hard to find right now because of the pandemic, because, you know, everybody's been at home. People have been snapping up uh, hardware left, right, and center. But um, you know, that's kind of the pricing that I've seen recently. So, and that'll give you the pedals, you know, the throttle um, with some of the hat switches that you'd need and stick. Um, it's all a pretty good unit. And then, of course, you can get into the higher higher end as well. So, you know, Thrustmaster makes a really nice uh, unit, the Warthog stick and uh, throttle their HOTAS system. Um, and uh, those run around 550 these days. I just did a quick search. So you may be able to find it for cheaper, may be able to find them used. They've been around for a while. Um, but you know, uh, that is, um, you know, that's very popular, certainly in DCS uh, for DCS players, because it does have all the hat switches that you'd need uh, to operate aircraft like the A-10 uh, Warthog, which is kind of, which is patterned on, uh, but certainly some of the other aircraft as well. And of course it would do great for IL-2. Um, VKB, they have their gunfighter unit, uh, which can be uh, mounted or, or on a stand like this. Uh, in the picture, and again, those are about those are around 410 to 485 or, or thereabouts. So uh, depending on the configuration that you go for, and they have they have options. So that's why the pricing differs. Um, Verpal is another company, and I've done some reviews of some of their hardware. I've got some of their stuff here with me. Um, they they do things in a modular way. So you know, and they've got their Warbird unit uh, base unit as an example. They also have another uh, base if you uh, want to use that. And then they've got grips that you attach uh, onto the top of it, so you can unscrew the grip and. Uh, you know, put on the unit that you need. And then if, if you upgrade or you're looking for a different experience, then you can unscrew it and put on a different one and, and keep on. So uh, those are more expensive. They're sold, they're in euros. Um, 
uh, and you have to import them. But uh, you know, if you're looking for high-end hardware, it's worth considering. And again, I have some reviews of their some of their equipment on on my site, so you can look that up there. Um, and then you know some of the other things that you can pick up: throttles, uh, button boards, uh, pedals. You know, I have uh, MFG crosswind pedals uh, are you know uh, a staple on, amongst many. Uh, so so those are good options. Thrustmaster makes uh, a nice set of pedals as well. And if you really want to get into it, then you can start to mount things. So uh, I actually have, with my setup, I have Fox mounts. Uh, so I've, I've uh, and they're on a clip and I, I can actually show you on the webcam. So they're on a clip. So I've just got them clipped to my, uh, my desk here. And then, you know, I move it out of the way when I'm working and I can clip it in and, um, and uh, fly with it for a couple of hours and then, and then store it away again. So, um, so I've got them. Uh, Monster Tech makes a very good set. Verpal makes uh, a set as well, and um, um, and theirs are customized to, to work with their stuff. So um, those are some of the things that you can get into as you get over time. And and prices vary, so I didn't put anything there, but those can you know add some extra. So if you really want to get into it, uh, you can certainly you know you can set things up that way. I'm going to throw in a couple questions about hardware now. Sure. Lots of great questions coming in. And sure. David, Al, I have your questions. I'm going to save those for a few minutes. A lot of these hardware pieces and virtual reality as well, if anyone's in the San Diego area or thinking about traveling for Flight Sim Expo, Thrustmaster will be there. There will be lots of VR to try. And myself, the first time I tried virtual reality was at Flight Sim Expo because I didn't want to just buy a you know 2000 at the time dollar headset and kind of see what it was going to be. So really a great opportunity. I'm trying to get VKB and Verbal there. They're a little tough to get a hold of. Of, but sure. we're really yeah. hoping to get as many of those types of hardware providers out there. Thrustmaster for sure will be there. Sounds like Logitech may be there as well. Okay, let me ask a couple of questions, starting with Conrad on the Stormbirds YouTube channel. Any experience with force feedback sticks? And could you talk about that? I actually don't have any experience with any force feedbacks. Uh, they have been unavailable for a while. The last one that was really popular was the Microsoft uh, force feedback too. Um, which I never got a chance to use. Uh, people swear by it. Some people bought extra copies because they knew that they were going to run out um, and they really had a great time with it. There are, uh, I think, a couple of really expensive options, which I, I can't remember the names of, that, that do exist for it. Uh, I don't know what happened. I, some people have said there was some patent issues that, that prevented a lot of companies from going that way. So there hasn't been uh, very many uh, new, in fact, there hasn't been any new that I know of in the sort of consumer market um, for feedback units. So, Okay. Anything you know about uh, Win Wing? They're, uh, I think they're a Chinese company looking at their website and they have an F-18 HOTAS that comes from Matthias at Aerosoft. Yeah, and I, I was going to put them on there and I think I forgot to. So um, they've got, they're another company. They're just kind of getting started in the last little while. Um, they've got a F-18 oriented, uh, you know, stick HOTAS system with a, I, if I remember correctly, it's got an integrated um, uh, mounting kit so that you can, you know, right out of the box, you can mount it to your table. So um, there's, there's more options out there than I put in this, in this, uh, these examples, but I just wanted to give some people some ideas. You can, you can certainly seek out and see what else is out there too. Thanks, Matthias, for the question. Good to see you. I apologize. I'm probably mispronouncing this name, but I'm going to guess Gear, maybe Geyer, asking how important is a HOTAS on a stick? So I guess sort of the additional features as opposed to just a plain stick. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's really nice to have for sure. So if you're, um, if you're doing modern um, aircraft, like uh, with DCS World, uh, the HOTAS does really make your life a little bit easier. Otherwise, you're trying to remember keyboard commands. It's like, you know, uh, Alt, uh, X, S, A, D, or something like that to control something. Whereas if you've got a hat switch, then it's a little bit easier to, to manipulate. Um, and certainly, I find to remember as well, because it's a bit easier to remember where it is on the, on the unit. Um, yeah, it, uh, um, you could, you don't need it. It is really nice to have. Cool. And uh, just a comment going back to force feedback from the air combat tutorial library on the Stormbirds YouTube channel used to have a Logitech G940, which had force feedback useful for feeling the buffet, but that was about it. And I much prefer moving to the Thrustmaster Warthog with the extension, even without the force feedback and a couple comments sort of around that same line, which really Colin is what you were saying as well about sure. force feedback. And you're right. There's not a ton of that around even in the civil sim space these days. No. 
no, it may come back at some point. I, I expect at some point someone will will either make some kind of breakthrough or something, and it, it'll become popular. So. Yeah. Very good. Okay, I'll save some questions and let you keep sure. going. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, I'm running longer than I was hoping to. So I'm going to skip through here. I, you know, I mentioned we talked about VR already. We talked about head tracking. Uh, I wanted to, you know, mention there's other utilities out there too uh, that you know you can use in conjunction with with your uh, flight sims, attack view, voice attack. Uh, there's something out there called SRS, uh, Simple Radio. Um, and that is a third party piece that uh, connects in directly with IL2 and DCS. And you can use that as a uh, way to have more realistic radio communications. Um, and I, I actually really like that. It's great for IL2, but it, even better, I think, in DCS because it's you can manipulate the radio in your cockpit and you know you cha change the channel or punch in the, the um, uh, frequency and then connect and talk to people on that frequency. It's very immersive. So just wanted to throw those in there while we're while we're talking about some of the uh, the essentials. And, and of course, TACView, uh, which I've got the screenshot on there. That is great for, um, you know, reviewing your multiplayer session, seeing what happened. Uh, it helps with, with uh, IL-2. You can see, you know, where that guy came from that got you that you didn't see coming. Uh, the same thing in DCS. It, you know, you got hit by that missile. Where did that missile even come from? I had no idea it, it was even coming for me. Those kinds of moments you can you can use TACView to review and learn from, and it's it's really helpful as a as a tutorial system or as a as a review system. Uh, so flight sims that are out there, I've already been talking about them a lot, and I wanted to talk about the hardware part first, but. Um, uh, you know, I wanted to talk primarily about the two uh, big series in combat flight sim right now. So I'll start with DCS World. Um, a lot of people may already be aware of this, but if not, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a simulator platform and it's actually, it is free to play. Um, it comes with a couple of free aircraft. It does modern, it does Cold War, it does World War II. Uh, so you can, you know, have that modern jet experience or you can go back and you can fly something like a P-47 that I got pictured there or Focke Wolf or uh, P-51 Mustang Spitfire. They have a growing collection of, of um, World War II aircraft. They have a growing collection of, of uh, Cold War era stuff and modern as well. So, you know, you can fly a Harrier, you can fly an F-16, you can... Um, you can fly an SU-27 flanker. Uh, there's there's options in DCS World um, to cover those range of of, um, of areas. Um, so it's it's a very popular sim. Uh, it's developed by Eagle Dynamics. It also has third party developers that are actively building into that ecosystem. There's a lot of activity that goes on every year. Uh, we see new aircraft and modules uh, added or uh, capabilities expanded. Uh, they they have what I would call you know certainly high fidelity aircraft like the like the F eighteen um, the A ten C is is a, a community favorite um, these are extremely high fidelity very high fidelity flight models system modeling is extremely deep uh, you know uh, systems and procedures are all there you can do the cold starts all of that. Um, and of course, you can take them into combat and do all the things that we've been talking about. They also have some medium fidelity aircraft. And I mentioned those because I think they're actually, they're useful, especially if you're getting started. Um, there are some aircraft that are a little bit simplified. They still have high-end uh, flight uh, you know, fidelity. They have great graphics, um, but they're a little bit easier to kind of get into and you, you can learn and then you can jump into the high fidelity stuff. And we'll go over that in a second. Um, it also has helicopters, you know, um, it has the Huey, it has the MI-24 Hind, that's the newest one, I showed you the clip earlier, so you can get into uh, a lot of different kinds of flying, and I love the diversity, like, you know, it's all part of the experience that you can, you can have those, those kinds of unique experiences that you wouldn't get, you wouldn't necessarily even get in real life, you know, you don't normally have the opportunity to fly an F-16 or an MI-24 or, you know, these kinds of aircraft, but in the sim you can, you know, get into a very high fidelity recreation. DCS, um, uh, DCS and IL-2 are, are alike on this. They, they do not have full world recreations like you get with Microsoft Flight Simulator or with X-Plane or P3D. Uh, they have scenery packages. And so um, you, uh, they have maps. They're literally, you can fly over this, this you know, limited geographic area. They're usually a few hundred kilometers um, in each direction. 
uh, and you can only fly in that area. And, and uh, part of the reason for that, I think, is the technology is just not there to do a whole world simulation in a combat sim. Uh, they're working, I think, towards it. And, and Eagle Dynamics has said that they, they are interested in that, but I think we're still a few years off. Um, but the, the, inter, the interactivity with the world is a bit higher than you get with the, the sims. So, you know, if you uh, crash into a building or, or, you know, drop a bomb on something, you know, there is, a, there is an interaction there that happens. So, um, so you do, there's a, there's a free map. There's actually two free, free maps for DCS World now. There's the Caucasus region and they just released the Marianas Islands. Um, so there's two free options. There's also uh, uh, Persian Gulf. Um, Syria, which actually includes parts of Turkey, Syria, um, um, and down into Israel. So you get most of that, that Mediterranean area. Um, there's um, Normandy for World War II and, uh, and the Channel map, which is also a World War II themed map. So there's some uh, scenery packages. I'm sure we'll see some more come out in the next few years. Uh, they are limited, but they're still, you know, big enough to have, you know, lots of flying and and even sightseeing. Like they're they're really high fidelity. They're impressive, um, the visuals that we that we have, especially with the modern maps. Um, DCS World has single player, multiplayer. You know, there's campaigns, there's single missions, there's instant action missions. Um, there's a um, a strong multiplayer community, especially for the modern stuff. But even for World War II and some of the Cold War stuff, there's some niche servers that have cropped up with uh, dedicated numbers. You know, you'll find anywhere from a you know a dozen to uh, several dozen er uh, people in a in a server at any one time. So there's lots there's lots of multiplayer activity if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, I also before I move on, I also want to mention they've just started this new. Um, uh, way of, of interacting with DCS that you can actually get a, a two week free to play trial. Um, so that's, you know, 14 days from the time you hit go and you can download one of their modules and try it out and learn it in, in the two weeks and see if you want to keep it. Um, DCS modules are expensive. They can be, you know, 30, uh, 50, 60, 70, $80 in some cases. So uh, this is a really good way to be able to go in and try something and go, yeah, I, I don't think I like that one, but you could try this other one and go, yeah, I'm hooked and I want that one. So uh, it's a pretty smart you know, marketing move, um, but it's actually, it's helpful for players too. So, um, so that's, that's available. Um, I'd mentioned free to play aircraft very quickly. There is an SU-25T, there is a TF-51D Mustang. The SU-25T is a bit of an older aircraft in the sim. Um, some say that's why it's free, um, but uh, uh, it is a fully functional combat aircraft. It's a medium fidelity aircraft. It doesn't have a clickable cockpit, uh, but it does have lots of capabilities. You can certainly make use of it and have a good time. Many YouTubers have and have showed off videos on it. So, so that's good. Uh, the TF-51D is a, is a P-51 Mustang. Um, but it's, this is the trainer version, so it doesn't have any active uh, weapons on it. Um, but it does have a clickable cockpit, so you do get that, that clickable cockpit experience and you get your Warbird experience in, so you can try that out, uh, you know, like you were flying in a, a civil sim, and then see if you like the experience, you can buy the P-51D uh, with the available weapons. So, and it's, you know, it's a high fidelity experience, um, you know, great flight modeling, great texturing, as you can see, um, all systems work on it. Uh, so, you know, it's just as good as any of the payor modules out there. Uh, so it's, you know, worth, uh, oh, it's worth a look for, for the price of free. It's, that's an easy uh, call. Uh, Flaming Cliffs 3 is, the, is, is uh, the latest iteration of their medium fidelity line. These aircraft date back to, to Lock On Modern Air Combat, which is an older title that Eagle Dynamics worked on. Um, they're a little bit easier to get into. They're a little bit easier to you know, start to master some of the systems. They don't have clickable cockpits. So that is a difference uh, from some of the high-end DCS stuff, uh, but they, they are easier to, to get into. So you know, if you wanna go to air dera mode, you just hit, hit you know, a number on the, on the keyboard and away you go. Um, so they're still fairly complex and certainly you know, the damage modeling is there. The, uh, flight modeling is at the you know peak levels uh, of what are available in DCS World, um, and a lot of people start here. I did. I certainly did, and I started with these, and then I moved on. Uh, and then you have your you know, your high fidelity ones, and I've talked quite a bit about them. You know the A10C, the uh, the the P47, the Mi24, 
um, the F-16, you know, a JF-17, all of these aircraft are available as, as fully clickable with lots of systems and procedures if you're interested in that. So um, they take a while to master and it's difficult to remember all the steps, but uh, it can be very rewarding when you, when you work your way through them. And I've already talked about the scenery packages. Uh, there's also DCS Supercarrier, which I talked about earlier, which adds that high fidelity um, Supercarrier experience. If you're interested in carrier ops, I recommend it. It's just, it just, you know, it ups your enjoyment quite a bit with, especially if you've got the F-14 or the F-18, um, just an incredible experience. So highly recommend that. There's also DCS combined arms, which I don't have, and I've used a little bit, but some people quite like it. That gives you ground war um, uh, and the ability to command ground units and operate some of them and that kind of thing. It's It's been, uh, I think, a little bit neglected over the last few years, but there's some rumblings that there'll probably be some, some big upgrades to that at some point as well. So, um, you know, if you're into that sort of combined arms experience, you can get it. Uh, I'm going to jump quickly because I'm I'm over time now, so I'm I'm going to try and go go as quickly as I can. But I wanted to spend some time uh, with uh, the IL-2 series as well. So Great Battles is the overarching name for the third generation of the series. It started with IL-2 Battle of Stalingrad in 2013. Um, it's uh, a sim that does World War II aircraft primarily. It also has some tanks, which I'll talk about in a second. It also does World War I aircraft, and it does both Eastern and Western Front um, uh, battles. So um, there's uh, a, a ton of content here, and it's a really uh, great uh, sim. It's one of my favorites, certainly. So. Um, uh, I wanted to talk about that for a bit. This one is developed by 1C Game Studios. Uh, they do have some third parties that are supporting them as well and, and uh, adding some content into it. Um, I would say that, that this has medium fidelity systems. So you don't have to know the startup for all your aircraft. That happens uh, more or less automatically with the press of a button, uh, which you know may be a bit of a turnoff for some people who really like the button pushing. On the other side of the coin, it's more accessible um, and it gets you, you know, into uh, the flying uh, a little bit more quickly. They still have very high fidelity modeling. The damage modeling is, is the best in the industry right now, although DCS is catching up quickly. Um, they have really great, uh, you know, flight modeling. Uh, the aircraft are, are really nicely detailed and there are a lot of aircraft now. There's 40, 50 warbirds that are available um, in, in, uh, in this sim. So um, the aircraft are sold as part of packs primarily. So you can buy, you know, for example, IL-2 Battle of Bodenplatt is a Western Front um, focus title set around the January 1 Bodenplatt attack, but it actually goes from about September of 1944 on to the end of the war, basically. And uh, it comes with that comes with 10 aircraft in the premium pack, eight aircraft in the standard pack. And uh, that gives you everything you need. It gives you the, the map, it gives you single player career mode experience, it gives you single missions, it gives you a quick mission builder. Uh, you can get all of that in one title. Um, they go on sale regularly, so it's really affordable. Um, there are individual uh, aircraft as well, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and of course, IL-2 has a single player experience. It has multiplayer. It has a, it has a really strong multiplayer community now. There's new servers starting up all the time. Uh, there's some well-established servers that you know have 40, 50, 60 players in it uh, at a time. And IL-2 very uniquely uh, in DCS hasn't quite got to this level yet, has a com full combined arms system. So uh, they have a title that's focused on tanks. And so we now have uh, servers, uh, popular ones, where you have uh, people engaged in tank warfare, trying to move front lines forward and back in a dynamic way on the ground, while other people are, are engaged in air combat at the same time. So it's um, it's a really cool experience. So it's, um, it's really neat to see. Um, I, yeah, there's no, there's no other way, nothing else to say about it. It's incredible. Plus, they've been to Flight Sim Expo every year, and as far as we know, they're coming again this year. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Definitely, if you get the chance, go and talk to Jason. Um, he, uh, he's the uh, lead um, or executive producer on it, and uh, yeah, great guy. And and uh, you know, he's been a big sim fan, so uh, you can talk to him about almost any sim, especially his. So. Uh, uh, so yeah, so for Western Front right now, bottom plat, you know, if you like P-51s, P-38s, Focke Wolfs, BF-109s, it's got all of that. Uh, Battle of Normandy is in development. 
And uh, it also does Eastern Front, which, you know, some people, uh, especially from a Western audience, myself included, kind of, uh, it took, took a bit to get into, but it's actually really interesting as well. And there's a lot of history here, a lot of interesting aircraft to fly, even just to fly them around and, and have that experience. So uh, they do Battle of Moscow in 1941, Battle of Stalingrad 1942, Battle of Kuban 1943, and you get, you, you can see the evolution of aircraft on in uh, that theater of war, you can fly you know, again, BF-109s and Focke Wolves that you know, um, and Yaks and Lags and Lovachkins and some of these other uh, types. And of course, the IL-2, which is uh, the, the title aircraft, um, which over, you know, I think it's 36,000 uh, were built during World War II. So uh, certainly a notable piece of aviation history. Uh, the series also does World War I, and, and th that is in part because um, the same team was responsible for another sim that came out a few several years ago called Rise of Flight, and that was a World War One themed uh, um, uh, combat sim. Uh, they are recreating their old assets with upgraded textures and some some upgrades uh, uh, to some of the modeling, and uh, so they're recreating that in their IL their, the IL two series. So you can jump from World War Two to World War One, or you could even fight World War One and World War Two aircraft if you wanted to have that kind of what if. Uh, experience. So um, again, really compelling. It's really interesting to be able to fly um, some of the earliest aircraft involved in, in combat, but even just, just flying them because they have bad habits that modern aircraft don't have and, and quirks that you need to understand. It's, it's, uh, it's really compelling. Uh, the IL-2 series also has collector planes. These are sold as, as individual pieces. So you, you mostly you buy aircraft and in, in, in these battle packs, but there are some that are sold individually and they kind of give you more unique experiences or they add to the, to the other titles. So, you know, you can buy the JU-52. It's a really nice recreation of JU-52. You can do things like, like transport runs in a combat sim, which is interesting. Um, uh, you could do you can drop parish uh, paratroopers at the front lines that kind of thing like there's other kinds of experiences that you can have beyond the dogfight i want you know i want people to know that you can have multiple experiences um you know you can get a hawker hurricane uh which served both east, eastern and western front not everybody knows that but uh, russians used a fair number of them um and so that's uh, a possibility and uh, the u2 uh biplane uh, is a bit of a legend in itself. It's actually uh, in some circles credited with shooting down and um, by, by maneuver kill an American um, jet fighter during the Korean War. Um, so it's a unique airplane, uh, but even just uh, as kind of a, a biplane to fly around, it's, it's really nicely done. So, so those are some of the options out there. Uh, before I moved on from the IL-2 series, I also wanted to mention there's, and this is sometimes a point of confusion. So that was great battles. Um, IL-2 Sturmovik Cliffs of Dover uh, is an older title um, that came out. It didn't do so well when it came out. Uh, it had a lot of problems. A lot of people skipped it. Uh, and then a, a, a mod team got into it after the official development uh, ended. Uh, and they eventually became the new developers of it. So uh, Team Fusion Simulations, they were a mod team. Now they're professional development. Um, and they've been... Uh, they've been um, very successfully turning this sim into uh, a bit of a success. So um, they've, they came up with Cliffs of Dover Blitz Edition, which upgraded a lot of the uh, earlier releases problems. Now they've released Desert Wings to Brook, which is a North African themed title. Um, this series is not compatible with the other series, but they do offer some unique content and uh, you know, some people are really um, interested in having that, you know, uh, you know, uh, flying in the North African theater, which is almost never covered in any other sim. So it's certainly um, interesting. They have well-detailed aircraft. They have lots of missions uh, for single player. Multiplayer is a little bit um, sparse, but <clears throat> we, we may see that grow still. So we'll see what happens. Uh, and just before I you know, finish off, there's also this Falcon BMS. There is Rise of Flight, it's a bit older, but uh, that's there. Uh, Falcon BMS is built on Falcon 4.0, but uh, a, a group of, again, a mod team become a developer basically has been uh, breathing life into it for many years now. It's very well evolved. Um, there's Wings Over Flanders Fields, Wings Over the Reich. There's a two, you know, they're a bit more niche, but they're certainly out there. 
and you know if if you want something that's more casual there's certainly war thunder is out there it's very popular it's free to play uh there is a premium model and there's kind of a grind experience that you have to go through to uh fly things but you know if you just want a quick combat sim light experience war thunder is out there so um there's lots of options out there i wanted to focus on on the the three that i did but certainly you know there's there's more out there and i wanted to acknowledge that um and then just to kind of end things off you know uh these sims take time to get into if you're an experienced civil pilot you're still going to struggle a little bit when you start off take your time you know break things into smaller lessons do a little bit at a time i know i certainly did you know i just learned how to land a tail dragger for a while um you know with the warbirds in aisle two because that's hard to do um and it's really well modeled so you you really have to be careful or you you will do a ground loop at the end so um just as an example you know do these small lessons and then keep practicing it it uh it becomes really re uh, rewarding as you uh uh, go on. So a little bit of encouragement there at the end. And of course, there are resources out there. YouTube tutorials like uh, Air Combat Tutorial Library is a great resource uh, for all kinds of, uh, of flight information. Um, and Requiem is a CFI and a, an airline pilot. And I fly with him all the time. He's a fantastic guy. Um, there's Chuck uh, Chuck's guides, which in the DCS world, people live and die by almost. Um, they won't buy a module until the Chuck's guide has come out. So these are, you know, uh, big big PDF tutorials. I use them all the time. If I even, even on a module I know well, I'll just go back and refresh my memory and it's all in Chuck's guide. So uh, shout out to him. There are other YouTubers out there. There's there's tons of them, including Spud Knocker, who was originally scheduled to do this, that, you know, they do a fair bit of work on uh, making sure that that there are tutorials for, for aircraft in video form. So it's, you know, sometimes it's easier to learn that way. Um, and Eagle Dynamics, and and uh, they do their own videos, which is nice. Um, the IL-2 series, there's a interactive um, um, series of uh, training tutorials that a community member is, has put together called uh, Flight School, and you can download a Flight School campaign. It's just short missions that, that get you started with the aircraft that you want to fly. There's so many resources out there, you know, go and check them out. Uh, and of course, I, I'll end on, you know, Flights and Association. We just put together uh, this new combat section with all these resources listed. So be sure to check that out. Thank you very much, Colin. That was and awesome. That, that's it. I'm a, I'm a little over time. I, the game's probably started, but nothing probably important has happened yet. So uh, Apparently uh, there's been a goal, but I'm not going to spoil it for anybody. Oof, maybe, uh, maybe you're wanting to watch don't, it. Don't minutes. tell me. Don't tell me. I won't. Uh, I will go through a couple of questions. Lots of questions here, so we'll do as many of them as we have time sure, for and please. try and wrap up in the next couple of minutes. Starting with David's, how many hours do you think a new player needs to play in order to really feel like they can ace a complete real mission in a complex DCS airplane? Whew. Uh, in a in in a DCS, you know, high fidelity, something like an F eighteen. I don't know. I, I would say it's about. I'm gonna say it's about ten hours to to feel like you could do the complete mission, start to end. You know, carrier take off. Um, you know, fly the mission, do the tanking, uh, launch the weapons, use precision weapons or or unguided. You know, um, get into an air to air fight. Uh, and then come back and land back on the on the carrier. I think it takes about ten hours to get there. Maybe I'm under overestimating. I'm not sure. Um, it takes a while though to really get into it, and uh, it can be discouraging at first because you're like, "I this is like how how do I make sense of all this?" It's this why I said, you know, break it into small lessons. Just do a little bit, whatever makes you you happy. If if you know carrier takeoff and landing is your thing, just spend some time doing that. A couple hours doing that. Um, if air to air combat is the thing you want to jump into, sure, go and do that. And, you know, there are missions where, you know, you've got a target right ahead of you and you can just push all the buttons that you need to and then and get to the point where you're, you're, you know, feeling confident about that. Eventually you string all those things together. And I know the first time I loaded up and, you know, like had the complete Hornet flight and, you know, gone into combat and completed my mission and then came back and landed on the carrier. And I just, you know, I sat back and I went, that was, you know, worth it. So, um, you know, if it takes 10 hours, it takes you 15 hours, keep at it, do it in small pieces. Uh, it's really satisfying when you get to the end that it, the payoff is great. Very good. And you mean FSA captain, is there a discord server that you can get into to help train people in DCS from scratch? Any good communities, multiplayer groups you'd recommend? 
Yeah, um, there are there are a lot and more than I could list, and I probably forget somebody. Um, I, I'll say the one that I'm definitely active in is, um, uh, and it's through uh, the Air Combat Tutorial Library, um, uh, with, with uh, you know Requiem's uh, uh, YouTube channel. There, uh, that's a good one to go to. He's got a Discord link on his channel somewhere on his YouTube channel. I can't remember where it is. Probably in all the video, you know. And he's uh, they're they're watching, so feel free to throw it in the chat, please, as well. Oh sure, yeah. Um, so. Um, I think I have links to it as well on uh, on on the FSA page. So if not, maybe we should add some Discord communities to the list. Um, you know, that's a good community. He does take on some some students, you know, through a Patreon system. So if that's the way you want to go, that's that's a good option. Um, and he is really knowledgeable, so it's it's definitely um, uh, you know a way you could go. But uh, I'm also there as just I answer questions all the time, like sometimes every day. Um, people have a question about DCS module. How do I do this? Uh, this is how you do it, or this is how you find the, the tutorial to do it. So, um, yeah, that's that's one. There are many, and I don't want to, you know, leave anybody out. Yeah, you start making a list, and then you're always going to forget at least somebody for sure. Yeah, for sure. Another question from David. We're kind of going into some a couple more training questions, and then I'm going to start asking you about your opinions for the future from a few more. Are there sure. preset missions in DCS? Things that you can kind of do like there were in FSX, or is it more of a make up your own missions, fly in multiplayer kind of platform? Uh, both, both definitely. So um, they have uh, some instant missions where you can, you know. Uh, uh, you get into the sim and you go, yeah, instant mission. I want to fly over this uh, uh, map uh, that I own and this airplane that I, I fly, and there'll be a list of options. And, and sometimes it's, you know, uh, 2v2 or 4v4 or, you know, just a cold start and sightseeing or, you know, what have you. It has all these different options depending on the module. It does vary a fair bit, so I can't tell you exactly what it is because it's different per module. Um, but you can have those and they're really quick experiences. You know, you can, you know, if you just want to have a little, you know, gunfight between two jet fighters, that's that's an option. You can just select that on the list, fly it, and you're done in 10 minutes. Um, uh, it does have more involved missions. You know, some of them could last an hour or it could be 20 minutes or, you know, uh, so those are available. There are campaigns, scripted campaigns. Some of them have voice acting and all kinds of detailed briefings and that kind of thing. So you can go that direction as well. And it has really strong multiplayer. Customizer 2 on the Stormbirds YouTube channel. Are World War I planes easier to get into for a beginner since they're not as complicated as modern airplanes? Or do you think you could start anywhere? I think you can start anywhere. Uh, there, there is something about World War One airplanes which is interesting. They are really simple in terms of you know there's there's no radar system. There's no um, there's not a lot of complexity that way. So so that's nice. The flip side is they're a little bit harder to fly actually. So you know with a Sopwith Camel, if it's at a full fuel tank and you try and make the wrong kind of turn, it will get into a spin that you can't recover from. Um, that's also interesting. So, you know, like that can be a fun way to experience it. Um, yeah, that's, that's tough. You, 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 either way you need to learn some things. It kind of, I think it depends more on what you're interested in. If you look, if, if, you know, World War One biplane sounds really interesting to you, if that's your jam, go for it and uh, pick them up and learn them. And you, you learn the quirks as you go along. If the World War II warbirds are your, your interest point, do that. You'll you'll pick up the complexity. If the modern jet aircraft, you know, you want to fly an F-16, DCS has got a great F-16. It's still in development, but you know, it's going to be a really you know solid module over the next year, I think. So, um, just as as examples. So yeah, uh, pick the airplane that you're most interested, in, or the type of airplanes you're most interested in. I think that interest will propel you through any of the the learning challenges. On the Flight Sim Expo YouTube Hype Performance Group, hello Steve, by the way, uh, he's asking, what's the next big thing coming to DCS World, do you think? And kind of a similar question came through on the Stormbirds YouTube channel from Sim. What are you most looking forward to in the next year or so? Yeah, um, the next big thing I, is, well, depends on, on who you ask, of course, but uh, certainly in the next uh, several months, you know, we're looking at the DCS Mosquito is coming for uh, uh, to the World War II uh, side of things. So that's uh, quite interesting. Uh, there's, it's been delayed a little bit, but it's, uh, we've seen good progress in, uh, the, the most recent, uh, dev update. So that's exciting. I'm, I'm pretty interested to check that, that aircraft out. Um, and on the modern side, the, um, um, 
uh, Apache helicopter, the AH-64D uh, Longbow uh, Apache is coming to DCS. That's allegedly slated for third quarter. Um, you know, most followers of DCS will kind of chuckle and go probably, you know, quarter one, 2022, we'll see what happens. Maybe, maybe it will be on time. Uh, but in, in any case, there's a lot of excitement around that, you know, a really uh, modern uh, attack helicopter for, for DCS. Um, that should be interesting. So uh, a little further afield, there's some really interesting uh, Cold War aircraft coming, uh, A7 Corsair II, um, F8 Crusader. Uh, there's a MiG-17 that's on the way. Uh, I think those are going to be interesting too, but I think, you know, we're going to see those in, in the next year, probably. Perfect. We're going to do two more, starting with Angry Russian Simmer, FSA Captain. What's your opinion about DCS Liberation? It says maybe we should stop waiting for a dynamic campaign from Ed and help DCS Liberation's developer. <laughs> yeah, so just for people who don't know what that is, uh, there's something called Liberation Campaign for DCS. This is a third party. It's free. Um, it's, someone made it on their own, basically. Uh, it's really good. Um, I started flying it single player about two or three months ago, just to kind of check it out. And then more recently, I've been flying it in multiplayer. You know, we, we get together, plan the mission, um, and it's a dynamic campaign. So, uh, it generates a scenario based on the, the orders that you give. So you say, I want this flight to go here and I want this flight to go here. This flight's going to do, uh, you know, close air support. This one's going to do a suppression of enemy air defenses. Uh, and then you set the mission in, in motion and then you go and fly it. It is, it's, it's impressive. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm still very interested to see what Eagle Dynamics comes up with, with their dynamic campaign, because I think they're going to add a lot of core, good core technology upgrades in the process. But uh, yeah, Liberation Campaign is here now and it's fun. Very good. And last question from Sam a few minutes ago. What do you think, I think you say Mac, MAC will bring to the genre? Will it bring more players to the game or will it split the community? Yeah, Mac is going to be interesting. So Mac is modern air combat. It's something that Eagle Dynamics announced, I think it's about two years now, if memory serves. And uh, we actually really don't know what it is now. Some of us thought at the start that it would be Flaming Cliffs 4. It would be, you know, maybe a couple of new uh, medium fidelity aircraft that, uh, and some upgrades to the old medium fidelity aircraft, which may still happen. Um, uh, but I, it sounds more and more like it's going to be a separate product, uh, and it would be kind of like Eagle Dynamics uh, tries to make their really complicated simulator into something that's not quite War Thunder or Ace Combat, but kind of more accessible that way. I don't think it will split the community. I think most of the people who are interested in DCS World now are going to stay with it. I don't think that that's going to change. Um, I think it may have the benefit of potentially helping upgrade some assets that they've created for, for Mac, which I think, you know, are going to be part of DCS world anyways. And, uh, I think it may open the door to getting some new people in. So, you know, uh, if there's a, an easier way to kind of get your thrills with a jet, you know, aircraft, and that's the thing that you're looking for to start. And then you go, Hmm, yeah, I'd be interested to challenge myself and do the, the high fidelity version of it. Then great. You know, um, I think that happens. I think people will kind of, they work their way up the ladder. They go, yep, this is good enough for me right now. And then, you know, they get bored of that and they want to challenge themselves again. And then they get into the high fidelity. So I'm not worried about any community split. I think it's, I think it's good You get more people involved. I think, you know, more people feel confident to take the next step. Very good. Lots of great questions from everyone. Thank you so much for participating. Some of these webinars have just a few questions today. We've had plenty, so thank you. And Wonderful. Colin, if folks have more questions, you know they can find you on Twitter, they can find you on your website, right? Absolutely, yep. Yeah. Stormbirds.blog. And uh, yeah, there's links to Twitter. Uh, I do have some YouTube content out there as well, of course. And uh, yeah, um, feel free to engage me in those places. Very good. And as we wrap up today, a couple of the webinars coming up later in this month on Flight Simulation Association. We've got a busy month of July on the 16th, so that's on Friday. Very popular subject, virtual reality and home flight simulations. So all those VR questions from earlier, we're going to do a deep dive on that with a gentleman named Ben. He runs an add-on company called Sim Your Plane, and it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It literally allows you to turn your airplane into the simulator joystick. And because of that, he's got a ton of experience in 
in virtual reality, augmented reality. So he's going to be talking about all of that stuff. What are the best tips and tricks, the best performance tweaks, all that good stuff coming up on Friday the 16th. And then just over a week later on July 24th as part of Orbix's Fly July, we're really excited to have a cross-community panel discussion that's going to feature some of the big players, including Matthias at Aerosoft, who's on with us today, Helisimmer.com. Orbix, Parallel 42, TFDI Design, and just recently, as of this morning, Hype Performance Group, who was on the webinar today, they'll also be joining that discussion. So six of the most prominent payware and freeware developers in our community, moderated by FS Elite, talking about what does home flight simulation look like, and maybe a little bit more focused on the civil side, but what does it mean to have Microsoft Flight Simulator for the Xbox, and what is going to happen to P3D and X-Plane in the future? You can find out about those webinars and subscribe to get notifications and calendar invites at flightsimassociation.com. And my very last point, because somebody asked the question, I promised I would get back to them in terms of the giveaways that we talked about today, flightsimassociation.com slash survey. And if you enter the code stormbirds, you'll be able to double your chance to win a copy of Smooth Track or a voice attack you can enter that again at flightsimassociation.com slash survey. And Alexander, I hope you take part in that panel discussion by sharing it. That would certainly be very much appreciated. Thanks to everyone for being here. Huge thank you to Colin for being on and filling in today for uh, Spud, who couldn't make it today. All the best to him and his family. We look forward to seeing everyone here from Flight Simulation Association on our next webinar. Have a great afternoon. And if you're heading there next, enjoy the football slash soccer game. Take care, everybody.